Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to simplify a numeric radical. And this is one of a, a very, very important skill that a lot of students, you know, it just takes a lot of time for them to get really used to it. Um, but once you kind of get a lot of more and more practice, that's why I kind of am doing 12 different examples. Once you kind of get more and more examples, you can kind of move through it much more quickly, and it's not as um, confusing or time consuming for you. So basically, again, the square roots, you know, when we're taking the square roots uh, of an expression or of a number, you know, it's basically saying what number multiplied by itself, you know, which square root is what is going to be the number that's going to be multiplied by it itself is going to give us what we call our radicand, which is going to be under the square root symbol. And we don't usually entail the square root with an index of 2, but it does have a little 2 right there. That's just mean you're going to need to multiply um, our value by itself twice. So if we look at here, we're saying square root of 4. So basically what we're asking here is what number multiplied by itself um, is going to give us 4. Well, I kind of chose a pretty easy example, so hopefully you understand that we can rewrite 4 as 2 times 2. So you can see that 2 is the number that's being multiplied by itself, so the square root of 4 is just going to be equal to 2. Um, moving on to the next one, we have the square root of 64. And basically, I still remember when I was learning my times tables, the first thing I learned was the square numbers. Um, you know, all the numbers that basically you multiply by yourself get there. So 64 becomes pretty obvious to me. What number multiplied by itself gives us 64? And if you know your times tables, then you can be easily be able to understand that this can be broken down into um, the answer into 8. However, I just want to introduce Another thing that we do when we're first learning this, depending on what kind of class you're in for simplifying radicals, um, in the earlier classes, we kind of teach also helping you understand this by using prime factorization. So I'm going to work through the next couple examples using prime factorization. And then what I'll start doing is using um, some different rules, power rule and product rule, to help us simplify radicals much quicker. But let's just pretend that you don't have your times tables multiplied, and you're kind of a little bit stuck. And you would like to kind of be able to um, see which numbers you know you can multiply or where you can break them down. Well, if you look at 64 here, I could break this down. A lot of times, you know, whenever I'm breaking down a number, I say that, well, you can always break down a number into its um, you can always break down a number into its prime factors. And a lot of times to do that is dividing by um, dividing breaking it down into its prime factors, I should say. And um, one of the easier ways to do that is just divide by 2, 3, or 5. Usually those numbers, because um, those are all prime numbers, usually those numbers are going to divide to a number you're working with. However, if those don't work, then you can start moving up to like 7 um, or 11 and other, other prime numbers moving up. So if I was just going to divide this by 2, which is usually a student's um, first case, then I could continue breaking this down by 2 as well. 8 times 2, 4 times 2, and 2 times 2. So what you can see is I've now rewritten this expression as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So what we call this is the prime factorization. This is now I've taken the square root of 64 and rewritten it as a product of its primes. And because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 does equal 64. But what's important about this is kind of going back to our understanding of square roots. The square roots meaning what number multiplied by itself. So I know that the square root of 2 times 2 is just 2. The square root of 2 times 2 here is just 2. And the square root of 2 times 2 again is just 2. Well, 2 times 2 times 2 is going to leave us with a final answer of 8. So there you go. It's another way. So you can always look at the prime factorization. The reason why I don't do this for all the problems is you can see it takes long. And you, you know, I, it should be pretty obvious, depending on what class you're in, that the square root of 64 is 8, because 8 times 8 is 64. However, the more difficult problems are the ones that are not square number, when our radicand is not square numbers. So again, we can always fall back on the prime factorization method. Um, and uh, we can always fall back on the prime factorization method. So let's kind of work on these next two by using prime factorization. Um, again, I'll just look into doing it by 2. So I could break this, oh, let's break this up into 9 times 2, 3 times 3. So therefore, in reality, the square root of 18 is the same thing as 3 times 3 times 2. So I've just rewritten it as a product of its primes. I know that the square root of a number multiplied by itself is just that number. So the square root of 3 times 3 is just 3. However, the 2, I can't take the square root of that, so that's going to remain 
um, in under the radicand. Um, again, you can do 20, same thing. Just break it down. Um, it doesn't really matter how you break it down. You could do four times five, you could do 10 times two. Usually you wanna try to choose the larger um, or numbers that are kind of in the middle and keep on breaking them down, but it really doesn't matter. So I'll break it down into two times two times five. Just make sure that when you're rewriting it, you're rewriting it as a product of its prime where it's all prime numbers. Excuse me. And so therefore square root of two times two is just two square root of five. Okay, well I'm over with the long stuff. Now let's kind of get into some quicker ways to do this. And one of the quicker ways to do this is by using this identity L. We know that the square root of a value squared is just equal to that value. So the square root of x squared is equal to x. There, that means if I can rewrite my radical with a squared term, I can take the square root of that value. So rather than using prime factorization, which I did some examples on, you could do all these prime factorization if you're just learning. My usually method is I like to try to see, can I rewrite this as a, as a number squared? Basically, can I find a square number, and I'll list a couple square numbers here. Let's do um, 4, 9, 16, 25. 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, uh, 189, 12, 13, 14, and 225. Okay, so that's 1 through 15. Yeah, I wouldn't say hey, you have to know all those, but it, it's going to be pretty helpful, especially working with this. I'd say at least up to 1 through 12 is what we'll be doing in this uh, class or at least in this video. So I look at the square root of 27, I say, all right, do any of these square numbers divide into 27? Well, you can see that nine does. So if I rewrite this as nine times three equals 27. Now obviously you could continue your prime factorization. However, we can slow down a little bit. We can just say, well, I can rewrite nine as three squared. Then, Based on my identity element, what I can do is the square root of, of x squared is x, so that means the square root of 3 squared is just going to leave me with 3. I'm still going to have this um, 3 in, under the radicand, so that's going to remain the same there. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, which I guess I could, um, you could understand, is the square root of m times n is equal to the square root of m times the square root of n. So when you have um, expressions that are separated by multiplication under a radical, you can separate them as the, as the square root of each as a product. So in reality, I'm kind of doing these as two separate problems, the square root of 3 squared times the square root of 3. Um, all right, let's go and look at 50. Again, you want to see, is there any of these squared numbers that divide into 50? And you could say, yes. I have 25 times 2. Well, 25 can be rewritten as 5 squared times 2. Using this property, I can rewrite this as 5 squared times the square root of 2. The square root of 5 squared is just 5 times the square root of 2. So I didn't break it down in the other example, um, which I probably should have done first, but there you go. Um, da, 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 da. Okay. Da, da, da. Okay. Yep. So now let's just kind of go through this. Um, now here's these next two are, are some good ones that I like because a lot of times students will see this and they say, oh, okay, well, I can break this down into four. I know four goes in there, so they do four times eight, which works, right? So therefore, you have two square root of eight, but eight is not a prime number. You can continually factor down eight, right? And you could have to do this again, two times four times two, and that's two times two times square root of two, which is four square root of two. So how do you avoid having to do this work twice? Well, when you're determining the radical that's going to divide into this, my best advice is to determine the largest radical. So even though 4 goes into 32, 16 is the largest radical that, that goes into 32. So I can rewrite this as the square root of 16 times 2. The square root of 16 is 4 times radical 2. And you can see my answer is exactly the same as I got above. So the same thing goes for uh, square root of 48. You can look at that and say, what is the largest number that goes into 48? 16. How many times does 16 go into 48? It goes in there three times. So I can say 48. Oops. 16 times 3. Again, 16 is uh, the same thing as 4 squared times the square root of 3, which is 4 square root of 3. 
So notice how these are just a little bit different. It's based on you know, how much, how many times 16 goes into 48. Um, here we got uh, 24. Again, I look at this and I say, okay, four is gonna be the largest number, and four goes into there uh, six times. Square root of four, as we already talked about, is two. Done, you can see this kind of gets, you know, speeds up a little bit. All right, uh, 98. Uh, the next thing is we look at 98, so a lot of times I just kind of go through my numbers. No, 40, oh, 49 can work. So I can break this down into 49 times two. Square root of 49 is the same thing as seven squared times two. Square root of seven is seven times the square root of two. Uh, 128, 128. Da, 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 da. Oh, I can see 64 times 2. So I can write square root of 64 times 2. Square root of 64, as we've already talked about, is 8. Uh, 288, you can see, is 144 times 2. Square root of 144 is going to be 12, square root of 2. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you uh, simplify a radical uh, by taking this or the square root of a radical by doing some quick methods as well as longer methods using prime factorization. Thanks.